Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala guide us and guide you, forgive us and forgive you, bless us and bless you, protect us and protect you. Bless us all with ilm and nafi, rizq and tayyib wa amal al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbana la tazuk qulubana ba'da the date and wahab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahab. Ahabati fillah. From the questions that are azim, big, huge, comes this question that we're going to try to give some rights to. But I'm going to keep it as simple. And there are so many who have more, much more knowledge who could deal with this in a powerful way because this is really, there's so much to say. And there's so many different ways to deal with this. And I'm going to try my best to be as concise, to be accurate, to be respectful, and to be truthful, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and success. First, before even dealing with the question, I just want to say that even since I've been back in America now six months, I've seen so many things. I've seen so many children of the of a lot of my brothers and sisters in Islam that I grew up with and so many of the youth just openly advertising their sins. And subhanAllah, even to the extent that a particular individual I just recently came across on the Facebook that I knew very well, Allah Mr. An, is now it seems to be into witchcraft, is on their YouTube, has a YouTube page, I mean their, their Facebook, YouTube, and Unfortunately, Akrama Kamala is a, is a woman, and now we won't even say, you know, hijab is, is like gone, but let's just say that now total sexualization or uh, expressing sexuality about the size, Akrama Kamala, of various body parts, advertising it, dancing, subhanAllah. So it's just beyond belief, and I guess I have been out of reality of the of the reality of what's going on in the West because I've been sheltered in Saudi Arabia for so long and realizing the dangers and the serious need. This is another thing. So this is going to be a lesson that I want to say about the importance of loving the dua to khair, loving the dua to sunnah and having cooperation with the dua to sunnah. And that's why I love all the people from Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah, I mean those who adhere to the book and the Sunnah and the Madhab of the Salaf. And I got to say that. So I'm not talking about holding hands with Khwana Muslimin. I'm not talking about putting my arms around Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra. And I'm not talking about embracing the Ashadis. I'm sorry, I know it hurts. Nor the Ahbash, nor the Matridiyah. So we need to get that right out and clear it out. But when I see Dua to Sunnah doing good things that I support them in my supplications, if nothing else, if I can't support them in wealth, if I can't cooperate them, cooperate with them and otherwise, I love them because they are such a small minority and the voices are so, uh, you know, quiet compared to the people of Bid'ah with their organizations and their wealth and their, their da'wah, their masajid, the way they can raise, I've seen thousands, literally maybe like 10, Fifteen twenty thousand dollars on a jumwa for the imam from the Ashidis. He says something, and he he says, "Brothers and sisters, my dear respected brothers and sisters from the usula jamata <laughs> jamata tablik, you know, please don't you know almost like don't insult us by giving less than a thousand dollars." And people are just like, "Oh yeah, five thousand, ten thousand, three thousand for a cause in one jumwa, where some other masajid they can't even raise that in." months or perhaps a year and they these people do it in an afternoon so this is why you have to love ahl sunnah let's look at this question a question full of doubt and i'm sorry to say for the questioner may allah forgive us and you maybe you're a new muslim you just came across these doubts i hope that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you and i hope that what i say will have some positive impact upon you because your statement does contain kufr he says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brother, I have a question regarding circumcision. I asked this question at my local mosque, but the sheikh here st started doubting if I'm even Muslim. I hope you are more open-minded. My question is, 
Allah the Most High tells us, the Holy Quran, that he created us humans in the best form and shape. And also he tells us that there is no altering in Allah's creation. So how come we Muslims cutting pieces of our sons and daughters' genitals? I know that there are Sahih Hadith and that we should circumcise our boys and girls. But how can we believe in that Hadith who say so when they clearly contradict the Quran? Also, there is a Sahih Hadith in Muslim, Bukhari and Ahmed, that says that the Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, circumcised himself at the age of 80 with an axe. I don't believe in this Hadith because I think that it is fabricated and someone is ridicule our religion and our beloved Prophet Ibrahim. والسلام, when it, it's not fabricated, then should everyone now take an axe and circumcise himself if he's not already? Brother, I'm sorry if this question is inappropriate to ask, but this is very important to me. Barakallah feek, dear brother, and thank you for all your videos and all things that you are teaching us. So really, this is a book, but I'm going to try to do my best to just deal with. First, we have to understand something about where we take our Islam from. This is a statement of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He says, لَيْسَ لَيْتَقَادْ لِي وَلَا لِمَنْ هُوَ أَكْبَرْ مِنِّي بل الاعتقاد يخذ عن الله سبحانه وتعالى ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وما أجمع عليه سلف الأمة. so he said that عقيدة creed the belief that this is uh, it's not from me nor is it from those who have more knowledge than me or who are greater than me rather اعتقاد your creed is taken from Allah سبحانه وتعالى and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what the salaf of this ummah united upon habati fi allah allah tbarak wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem alif lam mim ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاه ومما رزقناهم ينفقون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim, Thalik al Kitab al Arabi. This is a book in which contains no doubt. This is a book that contains no doubt. Hudan lil Muttaqeen. It's a guidance for who? It's a guidance for the Muttaqeen, for the pious. Who are they? Aladina yu'minun bil ghayb. Those who believe in the ghayb. They believe in the unseen. Waladina yu'minun bil ghayb. Wu yukimun salat. What else do they do? They establish the prayer. Women marazaknun. Yunfikun, and from what we give them, our risk upon them, they spend. Those are the believers. Those are the muttaqin. That's what we want to be, and I know our questioner wants to be from them. If we look at that ayah, ahabatifillah, or those ayat, we see that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes the believers, and the believers one of the most important if not most important thing from amongst those from amongst those traits and others is they believe in the ghayb. They believe in the unseen. From the qawaid, from the principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in Islam is that our religions built on the Quran and the Sunnah. Your questions cause doubt about the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu the messenger of the religion. Your religion is nothing if you don't believe in the Sunnah. And your religion is nothing if you don't believe in the Quran. As Imam Babahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, this is a classical scholar, he said, Al Islam huwa Sunnah wa Sunnah tu hi al Islam. He said, Islam is a Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. You can't have one without the other. It is Islam. If you are Muslim, that's what your religion is. It's Kitab wa Sunnah. It's not other than that. You can't say that, you know, my feeling and I don't know and I don't understand and say, no. It's Kitab wa Sunnah. So that, I have to establish this foundation because the foundation is how I'm going to answer this question. I'm not going to really go into the details of everything you said because if you understand this, this will answer your question. We have to understand our religion is built on the book in the Sunnah. And our... When we make... One of the sifat of Ahl Sunnah, a precept, a foundation of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah, of the people of the Sunnah, the people who follow the Quran and the Sunnah, the Muslimin, the Mu'mineen, 
Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in wa tabi'in wa tabi'a tabi'in those first three generations from their sifat is going back to that ayah that they believe in the ghayb it's unconditional you how, how many times have you seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala none how many times have you met the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and really got in intimately with his de, his his sunnah zero times uh, and it goes on. How many malaika have you spent time with? How many jinn? Although we see a lot of jinn, perhaps. But how many have you met? I haven't, not that I was aware of. I've never seen any. Kulu hadam al Those, that's the unseen. So whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in his authentic sunnah, we accept. This goes to, here's a beautiful statement of Imam al tahawi He's a, also another uh, great classical scholar uh, after the time of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. So he's not that old, probably 500 years, something like this. And one of the things he said, and I'm just going to read a small ibara because this should give us some insight into this issue. وَلَا تُثْبِتُ قَدَّمَ الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ ظَهْرِ تَسْلِيمُ وَالْإِسْتِسْلَامِ He says that a person's Islam is not affirmed. You know, basically it's not accepted. It's not Islam. We can't call it Islam. إِلَّا except عَلَىٰ ظَهْرِ تَسْلِيمُ عَلَىٰ open acceptance. What is Islam and submission? Open acceptance and, and, and submission. So I don't have to. This is the path of Ahlul Sunnah with Jama'ah. Anything that follows under that. Your intellect. There are so many things we could talk about regarding your intellect. And all of our intellect is. Nux is, is we have shortcomings that doesn't go with the text. So many things, let's just, even if we didn't talk about the Sunnah, we talked about the Quran. So many things in there, I'm sure that if you read it in whatever language you're most comfortable with, you're not going to understand. You're not going to stand the whole Quran. You're going to need to go to Tafsir. You're going to need to go and you're going to need to accept because those are immo so much in there is a mortal ghaybiyah, things about the unseen. How many times have you experienced Yom al and all the events and the sun rising uh, from the from the uh, from the from the west and things like this. How many how, how many times is that ex you had that experience? Because I sure haven't experienced it. None of us have. Had a more had a more We believe in that. We make teslim in our hearts with that. This is an important foundation. This is because a lot of people they don't have any foundation in their religion. And that's just the truth. They don't have any usul a deen. Everybody's worried about major issues or major shubahat, major doubtful things. How many armies of people are leaving Islam because of this? They don't know anything about Islam and they don't want to know about Islam. They don't even want to learn. When people present knowledge, they don't care. They need entertainment. This is a travesty upon the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we're experiencing around the world. Don't think it's just here because I saw it in Saudi Arabia. Bilad al-Tawheed, the youth, shot out. But they are in a better position because they're not bombarded with the kufr quite the same because we have the internet, which they have, but they have the some other protections in the society, even though they're leaving the religion as well. We have many atheists, Saudi atheists and others. Well, here we have no defense, unless you're the few who come to the masjid and the few who try to learn your religion. You have to learn those so this is a This base principle is so important because that means you're not going to use your intellect. Your intellect is short. And as the scholars mentioned that the one of the base principles is we take the nasus, we give taqdim and nasus, we give the precedence to the Quran and the sunnah over your intellect. If you take your intellect over, you will. You're, you're more than bound, likely, to leave Islam. Why? Because you're going to go with what's familiar to you. Well, none of the ghayb is familiar to you. None of the ghayb is familiar to you. 
When the atheists start telling you about something, next thing you know, you'll be atheist. When the pagans who are worshiping freaking snakes and candles and whatever else they worship and all these myth mythological beasts and all the other criminal things that they do, you'll be, you'll be with them. The next thing you know, we'll see with your candles and your lights out and 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 black metal and uh, you know, I mean the the, the music style of of uh, with devil worshiping and horns. Maybe you'll have horns in your a dead goat's head on your wall or something or a picture of it, and that's not far fetched. I'm just telling you, even really from experience, well, I'm a stand. You have to have to sleep in the source. You have to accept the book and the sunnah. It's not for debate. And a beautiful statement of one of Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ta'ala and I misplaced it but he said basically he was talking about the minhaj of the Sahaba that they a very I think it's Abdullah ibn, ibn Mas'ud or Radiallahu ta'ala and I can't remember who who said this but a very simple and short statement that basically accept meaning accept the nusus the, the sunnah wala tabtadi'u and do not innovate. That means even false ideologies. So, specifically with what you're talking about, Habit Fila. For one, you have some weird misunderstandings. That's because of no knowledge, I'm, I'm sorry to say. Because here you're talking about circumcising yourself with an axe because you read it in a hadith. That's not how we practice and understand Islam. No one, I don't think anyone, even the people of Bid'ah, don't explain that like that. You've come up with your own explanation. That's the point. You're going back to your desires. You're going back to your limited understanding. You're going back to your distortions. You have to learn your religion. Wajib alayk. It's an obligation upon you. You're opening the door of kufr. Your door is like wide open. You didn't even have a lock on that door because you had no knowledge to lock that door. It's very important to know your religion so you know the ahkam of your religion. And again, if you don't accept the ghayb, you've pulled the whole rug of your religion up. What are the pillars of Iman? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyawm al-akhir wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. None of those things. They're all a more ghaybiyah. You've never seen a law, which is the first pillar of Iman. You know only through ta'allam. You, you learned. And you know, know from the, your, your fitra, your innate nature. And you also might know from the ayat koniya, the signs in creation that show you, wow, no doubt there's a creator of this. And he's the only one worthy of worship. Those things help you. But basically, have a umur ghaybiyah. That's something you believe in. You believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you believe the only way you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything really about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haqqan is from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sahih sunnat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's from the Quran and the Sunnah. That's really, that's your asal of where you're going to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means you have to believe in those things unrestrictedly and you fight the doubts of the shaitan. Every time they come, you chop their head off and even if your knowledge is little, you have to go back. If you don't have that usul and that foundation is not strong and you're standing on those pillars of Iman, you're through. We don't know how long your Islam is going to last. More than likely. This is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first pillar of Iman is believing in Allah. And then it's believing in the angels. You never saw the angels. I don't think you kicked it with the angels. Not that you knew of. But you believe. You believe they're there writing your deeds. You believe that when you're in a gathering of knowledge, that they're there recording who's sitting in the in the in the gathering of Talib al-Am and that they're descending Rahmah in that gathering of Talib al-Am. The only way you know that is because your messenger وسلم, said it. Amur Ghaibiyah. And the messenger وسلم, himself. How do you know? And his books. How many of those books have you read? You've read, yeah, you might have seen the Bible, you might have seen this, what's left of certain books. But you don't have, you know, much record of that. It's believing. And it's coming from the Quran. Belief in the Quran. And and, and the other pillars. Uh, uh, believing in the, the Day of Judgment. In the events of the Day of Judgment. We only know from the book and the Sunnah what's going to happen. That's how we know. It wasn't because we saw a nice movie about it. 
It wasn't because my friends speculated, wow, that would be cool. I think that's probably going to happen. No, but it was from the book and the sunnah. And the, the divine decree, absolutely. That's a Amul Ghaibiya. You believe in it. Your, your concept of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes from the book and the sunnah. And so it's limited. Any too much extra speculation and in-depth knowledge about it can either lead you astray because we don't know, we don't have that knowledge, but we accept. We accept it because the Prophet ﷺ said it's a pillar of, his, of Iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he kulli shay bi qadr. He created everything with in due proportion and measurement. All of that is amur ghaybiyah. Likewise, we accept the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. For all those false Qur'aniyun, those people say, I only believe in the Qur'an. This is the most ibtal batil. It's the most false falsehood. Like you can be false and off the hook, but now you just went to another level of falsehood and bid'ah and, khur and khurafat wa kufr. Because you denied, you denied the Qur'an. Prophet ﷺ said, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kirim, wa ati'u la wa ati'u su. Obey Allah and obey his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you love, in kuntum tu hibbuna, in kuntum tu hibbuna Allah, fi tabiyuni, yuhbibakum Allah. If you love Allah, you're lying if you, you don't. If you love Allah, then follow me. Yuhbibakum Allah. Allah will love you. So that means you have to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That means you have to know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That means you have to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of those things are inherent in loving and following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they're very implicit. And they're very explicit as far as the Quran. Meaning the Quran tells you to follow the Sunnah. You can't follow the Sunnah if you don't even believe in it. You don't even believe in the science of the Sunnah. Allah's not going to tell you to follow something and he hasn't preserved it. I'm not going to tell you to follow. He's not telling us to, to go back to the Injil or the Torah. He's telling us to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Clear. No dispute. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You got to believe in the ghayb. All of these things. These things, even these ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you read about them and you believe them. If they're authenticated by a'imma to Sunnah, and the ummah has basically has ittifaq on that, then you cannot, it's impossible for you to go against that. Even if it goes against, certain things go against your intellect. Again, it's your intellect. It's your intellect. And you've come up with a weird understanding that you have to chop your thing off with an ax. Nobody makes a hukum from that. That's the thing. That's called istinbat. That's how you look at that evidence. How you, what you derive in istikhraj min hadha adilla. Min hadha hi adilla. It's what you derive, meaning what the scholars derive. Yastanbatuna bil ilm. They, they take the knowledge from those nasus and they know how to put it in its rightful place, how to practice it, what it's evidence for and what it's not evidence for. But you've just mixed it all and thrown it all together to the left and right. My advice. Is you have to learn your deen. Because I don't think there's any... If you don't accept that base principle of taslim li nasus. Of accepting the nasus like the sahaba radi Allah ta'ala. They didn't debate and argue with the Quran. They accepted the nasus. If you don't accept that base principle, then how are you? I don't... I, I don't know what Islam was left for you. Whoever doesn't accept the Quran and they don't accept the Sunnah, what Islam do they have? Just a name. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. It doesn't matter if you call yourself Muslim all day. And it doesn't matter if your parents are Muslim and your grandparents are Muslim and your uncle. And... But it doesn't matter who in your family is Muslim. You didn't inherit that Islam. Your Islam, you're going to come by your, your knowledge and your practice and your implementation of that Islam. It's very important that we know and understand that. And so, Ahabatifillah, again, you've 
come up with your own understanding, your own tafsir, because that doesn't negate the fact that we circumcise. You know, these are all nasus. These are all text. So one of the ways, if something appears to contradict between ayat or contradict between the Quran and Sunnah, that it appears that way. The, the scholars, they make tarji because we're talking about divine source. We're talking about why. If you don't believe they're why, then you, you have no Islam as well. So my advice to you is really the answer to your question and any other doubts you may have is you need to learn the basics of your religion. You need not worry about these things. This, that would be a shame for you to leave the religion of Islam because you were confused about circumcision. Really, that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All we can do is try to invite you to Islam, invite you to the sunnah, and try to share al nafia. My advice to you, learn the usul of your religion. If you want to ask somebody else, you can ask somebody else. But that's my answer, is to get back to the foundation. Because you're going to leave your religion with these weird, strange understandings. Islam is easy. Learn the, the basics of your religion. Because those basics and that foundation is what you stand on. And that makes clarity. So you wouldn't even think or ask these kind of questions. Because you would know already you would have a, 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 a strong principle that you're standing upon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, tabarak wa ta'ala, to bless us all with ilm and nafia, wa rizkin tayyibah, wa amna mutaqabbinan. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. May Allah forgive us and you, guide us and you. My advice to you, again, is learn your deen because you've just built a monster of contradictions and strange concepts so we can't even peel that away because if you don't believe in the what Allah says and what the messenger وسلم, says what Islam do you have you have to accept both those sources that's kitab wa sunnah and it's not contradictory if you find something that you're confused about ask the people of the knowledge if you don't know but there's no contra contradiction in the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you so then how do, we, how do we understand the fact that some people are mentally deficient? Or some people were born with impairments or deformities and sickness. Does that contradict the ayat? No. All of that is from the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Different people are tested with, other, with illnesses and with uh, impurities and things like this. Being impaired. But again, you have to have a broader understanding of your Islam. And a specific understanding of the Usul al-Din. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad.